Brother Cody's going to be ministering this morning. I asked him a while back to uh, speak on the fifth Sundays of every month. And this month has five Sundays, and he texted me this week, and I really was impressed. He said, I feel like the Lord has given me something for this Sunday. Is it okay if I speak this Sunday instead of the fifth Sunday? So I said, sure. You know, if the Lord lays something on your heart, I don't want to get in the way. So, Brother Cody's going to be ministering this morning. So let's just go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we are truly grateful and privileged, Lord, for another opportunity, Lord, to come into your house and to be able to worship you. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for giving us the greatest gift ever given to mankind, your son, Jesus. And, Lord, today we come in here and we celebrate him. And, Father, I pray as we take up this offering, I pray, God, that you bless everyone that puts money in this offering. And, God, there may be some here today that cannot afford to give in the offering this morning. I pray, God, that you would bless them and help them the next time the offering comes around they would be able to give also. And Father, I pray you multiply and use this money for your kingdom and your purpose. And God, we ask all this today in the name of Jesus. And everyone said, let's worship the Lord this morning.
bless the Lord, oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. Sing that again. Scripture tells us that we shouldn't be surprised or we shouldn't be worrying, but to look up. And this song is titled Ready to Leave. Some folks are building hopes down here in so busy with their fortunes, they forgot what Jesus said. About the wars and earthquakes and the big trees, but he's 
please. But there's a group of people getting ready to leave. I'm ready to leave. And the swimming king of the night, making investments in the bank of the Christ could come just any day. Keep the Spirit's calling, make your way to Calvary. And get in that number, getting ready to leave. I'm ready to leave in the twinkling of an eye. Making investments in the bank up in the sky. Are you in that number getting ready to leave? Oh, sinner, what's the reason for your needless delay? While you're hesitating, Christ could come just any day. Keep the Spirit's calling, make your way to Calvary. And get in that number getting ready to leave. I'm ready to leave. song fresh oil from the throne it's new and fresh every day
clap of praise this morning. Aren't you thankful? His oil never runs dry. No matter how weak and weary we get, we can always return to the Lord. And He'll give us fresh power. How many knows we can't be walking at a distance from Him and expect Him to pour into our lives? we got to be walking where He wants us to walk. Amen. For Him to be able to pour in us. Amen. If you have a need this morning, slip up your hand toward Him. He's your answer. Amen. Join with me in prayer. God, I thank you this morning. God, for this privilege and opportunity, Lord, that we have to approach you this morning. God, we come boldly today knowing, God, that you're able to do more than we can even imagine and think today. And Father, I didn't come here today to command you to do anything, but God, I come asking God, realizing, God, that we are limited in ourselves. But God, you said in your word, with you all things are possible if we would believe. And God, I believe this morning, God, that you're still able, God, to minister and meet every need here today God you saw the hands but God most of all you know our hearts and God you know exactly what we need and father I pray today God that you would speak a word right here today in situations we begin to change God bodies would be made whole because God you spoke a word here this morning and father I've come and I ask by faith and I believe God that you can do Whatever we need done this morning, Father, we thank you in advance, and we pray all this today in the name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen.
And you may have a seat this morning. We have a special uh, that will be brought forth. Sister Stacy and the Woffords, and forgive me, whoever else might come up as a special this morning. So let's pray that God anoints them and blesses them as they bring forth this song. Nothing else fit for a king. 
I praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, but I've nothing else fit for a king. Except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. So come on my soul, oh don't you get shy on me, lift up your soul. Cause you've got a lion inside of those hugs, get up and pray. Lord, oh, praise the Lord. Oh, come on, my soul. Oh, oh don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song. Cause you've got a lion inside of those hugs. Get up and praise the Lord. Oh, come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song. Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song. Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. you again and again cause all that I have is a hallelujah hallelujah and I know it's not much but I've nothing else fit for a except for a heart singing hallelujah morning in Luke chapter 3, I'm sorry, Luke chapter 7.
Amen. God is good. Amen. Luke chapter 7, verse 36 through 38. If you'd like to stand, you can for the reading of the word. It says, when one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him, he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. A woman in that town who lived a sinful life learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house. So she came there with an alabaster jar of perfume, and as she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her, with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and poured perfume on them. This morning I want to talk to you about turning your burdens into worship. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for who you are, God. We just pray that you would continue to have your way in this place, Holy Spirit. Continue to minister uh, through this word, Lord God. And God, I just want to step out of the way, Lord, and I just want you to have full control this morning. God, open our ears to hear what you have for us, and we pray this all in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> when this woman had nothing else but a hallelujah, that's what she came with, right? We'll get into that in a minute. Uh, so I looked in the dictionary at the word burden, uh, it's just so that way everybody's on the same page. And the word burden means a heavy load. So it's something that's heavy, that's hard to carry. Right? We all understand what a burden is. Um, earlier this year, back in January, my wife and our two kids moved into our house uh, out in Mulberry. And obviously with moving, probably many people understand there's a lot of things that have to go into a house. Uh, we get to our living room, and unfortunately our living room door is just a little bit smaller than most doors. Uh, our house was built in 1885, so a lot of furniture was really small in that day and age. And so we didn't have big couches like we have today, and it didn't fit, unfortunately. Our couch did not fit through this little doorway into our living room. Thankfully, we had a love seat. It was able to squeeze through the door, no problem. We had a recliner. But throughout the year, I'm going to say it like this. We were burdened for more seating, right? We were burdened for more seats. We, we have two kids, and a love seat is just not enough for four people. They like to jump on top of us, and it was just, we were burdened for more seating. So a few months ago, we decided, let's just try it again. We, we waited all year. Let's try it again. So we have a sunroom at the back of the house that we put the full couch in, and we decided to pull it out through the front of the house, which is a heavy load. It was a long process just to get it from one point of the house to the other. And we try everything, and unfortunately, again, it doesn't work. Right? But that didn't stop us because we still were burdened for more seats. We wanted a place to sit other than the floor or, you know, wherever, right? We needed more seats in our living room. Uh, so we decided, let's, you know what? That, our living room, it's got a pretty big window. It's got a really, really big window. Uh, so we measured it. Because sometimes when you're burdened down by something, you're going to do something crazy. Right? You just will. So we measured the window, and we were able to take the glass out of the window, which made it even bigger. And so thankfully, we were like, we can get it. We can do it. So we have to take the couch that's now at the front of the house to the back of the house where the garage is, because the front door, again, was too small to fit the couch out of. That would have made life a little bit easier. So we carry it all the way back to the back of the house through the garage, and we get it to the garage, and we're tired. We're spent. We're done. It's been a day. Uh, thankfully, we had this little tiny John Deere wagon. And we're like, we're going to put it on top of that. Right? So we lift the couch up. We, put, we pull the wagon underneath it, lay it right on top, and we, like, pull it around to the front. Works smarter, not harder. Okay? Works smarter, not harder. It worked. Okay? Because I'm going to say it again. When you're burdened by something, you're going to do something crazy. You don't care what you look like. It doesn't matter what our neighbors thought of us in the moment. We had a burden, as silly as it may sound, we had a burden for more seats in our living room. And so that's what we did. We wheeled this couch to the front of our house, into the front yard, to the window, and we lifted the, the couch up and we started to finagle it into the window and it worked. We got it through. Same one inside. She was pulling it from the other side. We got it through. We rearranged the house. We got the living room set up. And you know what we did? We celebrated. We were excited. Why? Because the burden that we had was now lifted off of our shoulders. We had the seating that we wanted. It was a great moment because, again, when you have a burden in life, as silly as it may seem or as real as it may be, when the Lord takes that burden away from you, you celebrate. Amen? And then two weeks later, we ended up having to do it all over again because we found a free couch on Facebook 
And anyway, they gave us more seating, and that's all we cared about, right? Uh, that's a story for another day. So we were burdened, and this woman here in Luke chapter 7, she too was burdened. Um, where am I at here? So the Bible tells us that she was a sinful woman, and many scholars believe that she was a prostitute. So let's think about this scripture here for a second. We got this woman who's a prostitute coming before Jesus with this jar of perfume. That was probably what she put on herself to attract customers. She used this perfume to make a living. If you were a truck driver, would you give away your truck? (laughs) No. (laughs) If you were a welder, would you give away your welding materials? Probably not, because that's my livelihood. But this woman recognized who Jesus was. She recognized the freedom that Jesus is bringing. She recognized that Jesus here is the Son of God. And so she came before Jesus, weeping before him, and she took out her jar of perfume and poured it out. She didn't care what she looked like. She didn't care what she was losing. She said, I am done with this. This lifestyle I have, this burdensome lifestyle of being a prostitute, is no more. God, I'm going to follow you, Jesus, to the end of the earth. I don't need this perfume anymore. I don't need it to sit on my shelf at home, giving me, you know, a little bit of a, hey, you need some money? You can put that on. You know what you can do. Because I'm sure when she would put it on, she would walk out in the streets, and everybody would smell that, and they'd be like, I know exactly what she does, because I can smell it on her. It was probably a nice smell, a nice fragrance, but everybody knew what it was for. So her burden, she poured out before the Lord. She said, I don't need this anymore. I'm done with it. This is all yours, Lord. She didn't care what she looked like. She didn't care what people thought about her. And if you read on further, there are some upset people. Why is she wasting this? This is a year's worth of wages. Think about that for a moment. We're in December, and you're going to get your W-2s here in a, you know, about a month, right? And you're going to see your final uh, salary for what you made this year. That's how much that perfume was worth for her. Some of you may be a lot, maybe not so much for others. I don't know, right? But here's the thing. I don't know about you. Give me just a minute. It isn't a Cody message without an illustration. I don't know about you, but I tend to have a lot of jars in my life. That can become burdensome. I have my family. I love and cherish. I have finances. I have my job and my ministry. I have questions. Am I living the right Christian life? Am I living up to what the Lord expects me to live up to? I don't like this jar. I have bad habits. I have sinful tendencies. So what we see happen is, maybe it's yourself. Maybe it's the enemy comes in. But whatever it may be, we all got got burdens. And they all get filled up one by one. I know what y'all are thinking. Don't knock it over, Cody. Don't do it. We've all got a lot of burdens. And they weigh us down. And they're hard to carry. Could you imagine carrying all of these? 
I'm going to stop here. <laughs> I don't trust myself, all right? Well, you can all picture it, trying to carry all of these around. Maybe you can all feel it right now. The burdens of the world are on you. Maybe burdens you've put yourself in, maybe burdens that it's just the world happening. It's just life happening, and there's a lot of burdens that you have to carry around with you. And the Bible tells us that we should come before the Lord and lay our burdens before him. And a lot like this lady did, this woman here, that's exactly what she did. She came and brought her burdens before the Lord. And she poured it all out. And I believe many of us in this room today have done just this. We've poured out our burdens on him. But I'm going to ask a crazy question. What do we have left? We've got a lot of empty jars. That are just sitting here. You ever think the enemy likes to come back and say, hey, that thing you prayed for, that thing you poured out to the Lord? God hasn't fixed it yet. You still got a burden. You're still carrying it around with you. And I think a lot of times what the enemy likes to do is say, oh, yeah, just a little bit, just a reminder, right? Just that little reminder of it's not done yet. And then a week later happens and comes back, whispers in ears, it's still not done yet. And it's at this moment when we don't pour it back in. We start to worry. We start to cry. We start to just hold on to it and just say, yeah, I gave it to the Lord. Lord's got it taken care of. But then before long, it gets full again. And you're like, God, where have you been at? And sometimes that's when you start to get angry at the Lord. We should pour it back out to the Lord. And the moment that the enemy comes and starts to speak those whispers into you, that's when you should pour it back out to the Lord. No, 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 devil. It's, it's taken care of. It's the Lord's. It's the Lord's. I don't need this in my life. This is the Lord's. The moment that the enemy comes and starts to trickle those things in your ear, you give it back to him. That's what we should be doing with our burdens. And I love how, if you think about this picture of this woman, this was her jar of perfume. This was the way that she made a living. And yet she said, I, this is no longer my life. I'm no longer going to live this life anymore. But God, I'm going to come pour it out on your feet, Jesus. In an act of worship, essentially, is what it was. This is my burden here, Lord. But I'm going to give it to you, and I'm going to anoint you, and I'm going to anoint your feet, and I'm going to cleanse your feet. And it's going to be an act of worship to you. She poured out her burdens, and it became a worshiping act, a worshiping act for the Lord. So you pour out your burdens, and maybe it's not, you know, the family burden. Maybe the, you've been praying for a family member. Lord, would you save my family member? God, would you save my family member? And you're doing those things. You are pouring it out every single time it starts to get filled up. And then one day, one glorious day, the Lord saves that family member. And yes, you can be celebrative. You, you should be celebrative. And maybe you want to be like, I'm going to put this jar on my shelf at home. I'm going to be thankful for it. And you can. That's A-OK. You should do that. You should look back at those prayers, and you should be thankful that the Lord has come through. But at the same time, don't let the enemy come in and say, I'm going to give you a new burden to fill this jar with. See, I really think that this lady in Luke, I think she, she poured it out, and she left her jar, and she didn't take it home with her. Because if she took it home with her, again, I think I said this already, the enemy could have whispered and said, you need some money this week. And she could have went down to the perfume store and filled it up and said, I'm going to go get some money this week. But she didn't allow her that opportunity to do that because she left the jar at the feet of Jesus. And she said, God, I'm not going to do this at all anymore. I'm pouring out my burden and I'm leaving it completely at your feet. And the enemy's not going to come back and refill it up with anything else. Excuse me. So let me give you a few examples. These are just examples. Maybe it applies to you. Maybe it doesn't apply to you. But maybe this will help you 
allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you to get some burdens in the forefront of your mind that you can give to the Lord. Maybe, for instance, you recognize and the Lord has spoke to you. You know what? You kind of got a mouth on you. You don't speak right. You like those cuss words a little too much. And the Lord's calling out to you saying, let's clean that up. Let's clean that up. So you've got these, this burden of, God, I want to give this to you. I want to pour out my language, my words to you. I want to give it over to you because I want to live the right Christian lifestyle. I want to live right for you. And now I'm not saying that it's just going to boom happen and you're done, right? I understand that there's habits that happen in years and years and years. And that's, again, why you need to pour it out before the Lord time and time and time and time again. Every time it starts to get filled up, you need to pour it out to the Lord. But here's what tends to happen. We come to the Lord and we recognize, God, I have to get rid of this in my life. I know you are calling me to do this. So we pour it out to him and we say, God, would you help me with my mouth? Would you, Holy Spirit, take hold of my mouth and would you shut it when I'm about to say the words that you don't want me to say? God, would you... Speak through me and help me to not say those things. And we pour it out before the Lord. We trust the Lord with it. And maybe you're good for a couple days. But then Tuesday comes, and it's been a really long week at work already. And it's just Tuesday. You get home. You get home, and you have dinner, and you're like, I just need, I just need to relax. And so what happens is we like to go and sit down in front of the TV. We watch a movie. We watch a TV show. Right, because everybody at work's watching it, so we want to watch it too to make sure that we can talk about it at work. However, what you just prayed for on Sunday in this movie or show has a whole bunch of explicit language in it. And what happens is, is your jar gets refilled. <clears throat> Wake up Wednesday morning, you're trying to get dressed, and what do you do? You stub your toe on your, on your bed and that word comes out. And you're like, God, I, I poured out my, my words to you. I asked you to help me with this. Why aren't you helping me with this? Because you refilled your jar. You allowed yourself the opportunity because you weren't ready yet to watch that. You weren't ready to hear those things yet. Yeah, but at work, everybody cusses. I understand that. And, and keep giving it to the Lord to help you with it. But don't give yourself opportunity to fill your jar up. what, I'm not supposed to watch TV anymore? I don't know. Ask the Lord about that. Maybe you need to stop watching TV for six months. Maybe you need to cut it off completely until when you pour out your jar before the Lord, until it is completely and utterly empty and you've walked away and you said, Jesus, this is no longer me. I am done with it. I am done with this. Maybe that's what you've got to do. Because if you're burdened by something, you're going to do something crazy. This lady in Luke did something crazy. She poured out her moneymaker. Samantha and I, we did something crazy by pulling a couch on a little tiny wagon and throwing it through our, our living room window. Okay? Sometimes you got to do something crazy when the Lord gives you a burden in order to get over that. Maybe it just means not watching TV or movies for a while. And again, maybe that's not for you. Maybe you're okay with watching those and that doesn't bother your language. But it might for some people. And we as followers of Jesus shouldn't judge people for what they're going through. We should be there to lift them up and to help them and encourage them to say, you know what, I'm going to stand in with you. I'm going to turn off my TV as well. Until you are done, I'm going to do it with you. Or maybe... Maybe you go to the wrong places on your phone at night. So there's wrong websites that you shouldn't be on. And you're like, Lord, how do I break free from this pornography addiction? I'll just come out and say it, just to make sure everybody's on the same page. How do I break free from this pornography addiction? And God, I've poured it out to you time and time again. And God, I'm asking for strength. And I'm just asking that you would come and help me to break free from this. Because I know that you said having a lustful heart is just the same as sleeping with somebody. 
Like, it's just as much as a sin to have that lustful heart and to lust after the images, the videos, the movies, whatever it is that you're watching on your phone late at night, trying to keep it from everybody around your house. You're pouring it out to say, Jesus, I no longer want this lifestyle. And you trust him with it. And you're walking free from it for a few days. But then the enemy whispers in your ear, and you go right back to it. Why do you go right back to it? Well, maybe... Maybe it's because you charge your phone on your nightstand right by your bed and you haven't moved your phone. And so it's always there just tempting you saying, now's the time to do it. Why did I go back to it? I don't understand how I fell back into this. I poured it out to the Lord because it was right there. So maybe you need to move your phone to a different room to charge it. Do something crazy. Go buy an old-fashioned alarm clock. Because I know that's why you got your phone right next to you. It's my alarm for the morning. Is it really? Okay. And maybe at that point, when you pour it out again, and you do something crazy, like moving your phone to a different room, buying an alarm clock from the 1900s, right? (laughs) They still sell them in stores. You can still go to Walmart and buy an alarm clock, okay? Okay. But if you make the change and say, God, I'm pouring this out, and God, I'm going to make a change, and I'm going to leave this behind, maybe then you will see that freedom that you're looking for. (laughs) God, I just, God, I need help with my finances. I'm always struggling. God, why am I always struggling? So you pour it out before the Lord. You tithe the way you're supposed to. You pour it out, but then the next weekend, next weekend comes, and you go to the store, and you charge everything on your credit card. Like, that's a pretty simple one. Just quit using your credit card, right? But isn't it that, isn't it just like that, though? So many times it's, it can look so simple from the outside where, You pour it out, and then it comes right back. You pour it out to the Lord, but then we have our tendencies, our habits, our bad habits and things that it just comes right back. And so now I'm not telling you you have to do this. I'm telling you listen to the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit tells you to do this, then you listen to the Lord. But maybe the Lord is telling you today, cut the credit card, turn it off, walk away from it. You no longer need that in your life. To find financial freedom, maybe that's what you need to do. Lord, I got this secret sin that nobody in the church knows about. I was in the bars last night. Nobody knows about it. I was smoking this week at work, and nobody knows about it. I'm having a secret affair, and nobody knows about it. You're burdened. What's the crazy thing that you need to do to get rid of this burden for good? Maybe it's tell somebody. (laughs) Maybe it's tell somebody and ask them, I need a strong prayer warrior, somebody who's not going to turn around and gossip, somebody who's not going to turn around and stab me in the back and treat me with shameful thoughts and words, somebody who would truly love me and pray me through this situation. You can tell your wife, right? Obviously, tell the Lord. Pour it out before the Lord. But when you do those crazy things and you actually trust you know, the people that God has given you around you, you can find freedom. Maybe it's not going to, you know, all of your friends go hang out in the smoke break room at work, and so you go hang out with them as well because they're all your friends. Maybe you need to not go to the break room where they're all smoking to get rid of that smoking in your life. You've tried to just go cold turkey. You've tried to not buy the cigarettes, but maybe it's the people you're hanging out with that are drawing you to that. Maybe you're finding that to be your release from all the stress in your life. Look to the Lord. Ask him to give you another way to find release 
so you can break free from that. And I get it that that's a hard addiction to break free from. I understand that, and I'm not saying it's easy to break free from. But what are you doing that is crazy in order to break free from that? What are you doing that is turning your burdens into a worship to the Lord? Because that's where it is. That's what we've got to do. This last one is going to be our family, everybody's favorite topic. Lord, I am praying for my family. I pray that you will send somebody in their way to let them be saved. Lord, I pray that you would help me to say the right things to them so that they would be saved. God, I just pray that I'm pouring it out to you, God, my burden of my family, that you will make a way in their life to find freedom and salvation in you. Then it's Christmas time, and it's the holidays, and you're around your family members. And your family member says something crazy, because that's what family does. We all say crazy things. And you look at your family member that you have been pouring out before the Lord all year. And you glare at them or you say, well, that's not very Christ-like. You need Jesus. I understand your intent. But them not knowing Jesus, how is that helping them? There's no love in that. God calls us to love one another. To love those who are lost. Lead them to me through love, through your actions. And so as you've poured out all year and then you come together at this Christmas time and you're thinking, this is going to be the year that I'm going to uh, plant the seed in their life. And they do something that isn't Christ-like because they don't know Christ. So why would they be acting like Christ if they don't know Christ? So yes, they're probably going to be un- unchristlike. like Okay. They're probably going to be unchristlike, but in order to really love them to Jesus, we got to love them like Jesus. The Bible tells us to treat others the way we should be treated, the way we want to be treated, right? That's what God tells us. You should treat others the way you want to be treated. If you want to be treated with love and respect and compassion, treat others that way. That's how God treats us, with love, respect, and compassion. right and one thing i heard earlier this year was it was a little bit of a twist on that and i'm not trying to like rewrite the bible like don't don't hear that but treat others the way you want to be treated as well as treat others the way they should be treated because the way you want to be treated may not be the way they want to be treated i don't know if you ever read the book um just had it. Um, whatever it is. Whatever. We all, have, we all have different love languages. The love language book, right? We all have different love languages. The five love languages. Okay? We all want to be treated differently individually throughout life. That's why God created us uniquely and individually. And so maybe, yeah, the way you want to be treated isn't the same way that Jason wants to be treated. Maybe Jason wants to be treated differently. So we should treat him the way he should be treated, with love, compassion, the way Jesus treats us. And so when you pour out all of your cares before the Lord for your family, make sure you're treating them correctly. Because if not, that may be the barrier that separates them from Jesus. And it's hard. Let me tell you, it is hard. People are hard. Family is harder, right? Family can be really hard. So you pour it out before the Lord. And so you say, God, don't just save them, but Lord, help me to say the right thing to them. Amen? I'm almost done, I promise. Again, I believe the woman here in Luke uh, chapter 7 took this jar, poured it out, left the jar, and walked away. Let's flip over to Mark 14. If I could have a nickel for every time there was a story in the Bible of a woman that poured out a perfume on Jesus, I would have two nickels. It's not a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice. The story here in Mark 14 
is a completely different woman in a completely different setting at completely different times uh, from Luke 7 to here. Different times in Jesus' ministry. The exact same thing happens. A woman comes in and she pours perfume out on Jesus. It's weird that it happens twice in the Bible, but this is true what happens, all right? So Luke 14, verse 3, it says, Meanwhile, Jesus was in Bethany at the home of Simon, a man who had previously had leprosy. While he was eating, a woman came in with a beautiful alabaster jar of expensive perfume made from the essence of nard. She broke open the jar and poured out the perfume on his head. Worship team, would you join me on stage? And everybody else, you can stand with me. (coughs) Karen, if you want to leave that verse up for me real quick, just so we can all see it. You see, this lady here in Mark, not only did she leave the jar, but she did something a little bit different. What does that say? It says she broke the jar. She came before the Lord. I don't know what burdens she had. But she came before the Lord. And maybe she had a burden. And she did something crazy that I'm about to do. Okay? I see it in your eyes. This guy's got the hammer. We're freaking out. I'm not going to throw it. Okay? We're okay. All right? She did something crazy. She broke the jar. She made sure she could never return to this. She made sure that it was done, it was over, and it was finished. It was done, it was over, it was finished. So we've got this broken pieces of glass here. I'm not going to cut myself, I promise. Okay? You cannot refill this jar with perfume, with water, with anything. It is done. I cannot go back to this burden that I had in my life. I can't. There's no way that I can refill this. It's gone. And when you can understand, come to that, uh, you know, thought process in your mind of, That's what I need to do. I need to do something crazy in order to relieve myself of this burden. And I'm not talking like go to the insane asylum, right? Crazy. Don't do that. But something that just makes your routine different. Maybe it's breaking that jar that keeps getting filled up and finding a way. God, and maybe you're just like, man, I got this burden and I don't know how I could break a jar because this burden is with me forever. There's no way I could just break it. And I get that. But that's when we go to the Lord and we say, God, how can I break my jar that I hold this burden in? Because I don't need it to weigh me down anymore. If I'm walking around with a bunch of jars, it's difficult. It's burdensome. come to a place where not only do you pour it out before the Lord, but you say, God, I'm not going to allow this to be a burden in my life. I'm going to break this for you, and I'm going to trust you with it. And God, I just need your strength. Holy Spirit, be my strength. Lift me up on wings like eagles. Give me your strength, Lord, to not be burdened by this anymore. You can still love your family. You can still pray for them. You can still pour out your cares upon them upon the Lord. You should, you need to. I'm not saying don't stop praying because you are done with it. Keep praying. But don't let it weigh you down. If you have a need this morning, if you have a burden this morning, I want to encourage you, would you come forward and just give it to the Lord in an act of worship that might look different for each one of us today. You may need to just come forward and say, Jesus, I need strength to do what I need to do at home to not go back to this. Jesus, I need strength at work. God, I need strength everywhere I go to not go back to it. If you have a burden this morning, would you come forward and just worship the Lord with it? Yeah.
in and out of situations that tug of war at me all day long I struggle for the answers that I need then I come into All my questions become clear And for a sacred moment No doubt can interfere
trust you with it for more in 24. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you so much for who you are and everything that you do for us. God, we thank you that we can bring our burdens to you and worship you as we give them away to you, God. God, we thank you for the freedom that you give to us in all things that you do, Lord. Help us, Lord, to take this word and put it deep in our hearts to where we can find freedom from the burdens that we've had. God, we love you. We thank you for this. Keep us safe as we travel home and return this evening. God, we just pray this all in your name, Jesus. Fresh in your name.